huge honor. I get it. Huge honor. Hello everybody. I'm Huge Honor. It's a huge honor to show you how to make a quest for the quest framework today. So I heard that a lot of people are curious uh, how to make a quest for the quest framework, uh, but some people might not be familiar with JSON modding and so I thought I'd make a simple tutorial on how to make a quest with the quest framework. Um, to make it a lot easier I recommend that you use uh, Visual Studio Code. This is what I have open right here. It will help you uh, with the JSON being syntax highlighted and it will highlight errors and warnings. Um, you can do any of this in any normal text editor or like Notepad++ which I was using before uh, but I have a special surprise. Um, I actually created an extension for Visual Studio Code uh, called Bass Modding. Um, if you go ahead and install this one I've included some nice features for creating quests. Maybe in the future I will add more functionality to this uh, but for now it will just help out making a quests. So after you installed Visual Studio Code and installed the extension you just open a folder. Um, I recommend just opening your mods folder and I've got loads of mods here um, and then when you right click on your explorer here it will show you this new uh, context menu new bass mod and this will really make it very simple for you guys. If you click here you can enter a mod name so let's just call this example quest and then we'll ask you for a mod description that's really not important but let's just say this is an example and then it prompts you for your username um, if you've set it in the settings of this extension it will prefill so in my case it, it did that otherwise you just enter your name here and what it will do now is uh, let me find it. It will make this new folder here, example quest. That's the name of the quest that you used, and it will al already generate a manifest JSON in here with everything. Um, so if you make an update to your mod, it's always a good idea to increase the mod version here. And obviously, if there's a new game version, you'd have to change that here. So let's get started with making a quest. Uh, I recommend following the convention of uh, putting every JSON file into a corresponding folder. As we're making a quest, let's call this quests, and then we're going to create a file, quest underscore, uh, please use this uh, naming convention so that the uh, extension works. And then the name of the quest, let's call it example, and it needs to be a JSON file. So now you're here uh, and it's an empty file, very daunting, I understand. This is uh, why this extension is quite useful because I added uh, snippets. Um, if you go control space you will have a list of all the snippets. Um, but basically you can type out a short little command and it will fill in an example bit of code with uh, predetermined spots that you can exchange. So for example we want to make a quest and so that uses quest data so if you type in quest data hit enter it will prefill everything for you so we've got first the ID example quest make this something unique so for example I'll just leave it at example quest but you can name it whatever and then like normal catalog data you've got the sensitive uh, content doesn't really matter probably won't be using this and then the version has to be zero at the moment and then we've got this array of which is just a list of points of interest. So the way this works is that we have a list of points of interest and these get spawned uh, when a quest is not completed or failed. So if a quest is completed these point of interest won't spawn anymore. Same when it's failed. Uh, so as long as it's not in progress or in progress these points of interest will spawn. So let's make a very simple quest where we have an NPC standing somewhere in the market and when you talk to them they want you to bring, I don't know, an apple and once you bring that to them 
you finish the quest. So what do we want as a point of interest? Well, we want an NPC. So if you type in NPC, there's another snippet here for you. Boom, it will fill in all of this. So the very first thing, condition, we won't worry about this in this tutorial. With this, you can basically make a condition whether this point of interest will spawn. If you, for example, only want that later on in the quest. But for now, we're just going to leave that at now. Then level ID, this is the ID of the level that you want to have the point of interest spawn. Um, so an easy way to find out the level ID and the position and everything that you want to get is to go in the game. Let's do that real quick. I've made it so it directly loads into the market for simplicity's sake. All right, so let's say we want the NPC to stand in this booth right here. Let me try and position my player here. Obviously, if you're in game, you can do this without doing these console commands. And then we do toggle options menu. This will open the book for me. So inside the book, uh, you've got in your mod section, on the quest framework, we've got some dev tools here. Uh, these should help you create quests. Um, you can look through this. Uh, there's also two tips for everything. What we're interested in is logging the player position and rotation. So we click on this button, log, and it will now log it to your console. You can press F8 to look at it. Um, or after you've closed the game, you can look in the player log. So, all right, here we've got this log player position. So I'm just going to copy that and we can close the game. So let me just put that over here and so we've got the position and rotation and level ID. Uh, area ID only matters if you're in the dungeon because you want the position to be relative to the room slash area um, rather than the whole dungeon because obviously it can be randomly generated and it might differ. So as you can see the mark, uh, level ID is market so let's put that in here we don't need an area ID. A position says it's 10.78. Fill that in here. 46 and 2.02. .02. Um, and then the rotation is 90 degrees. So let's put that in there. Uh, the interaction radius is the distance from when an interaction starts. So how close you have to get for for interactions to happen. We'll leave that at the default 2.5 for now. Although actually because he's behind the counter, we might want to increase it a little bit. Um, in the document that I linked in the mods description, you can find all the information of what each of these settings do. I won't go over them. We'll just leave it at default. So then we've got the creature ID. It's just going to be a human male. Affection ID uh, number one is ignored, meaning that no NPC, no other creatures will attack this one and just be ignored. The container is what they're wearing and what kind of uh, weapons they have and stuff like that. I just use the player tutorial because that is just some nice clothing. And then the brain ID um, is what kind of AI they're going to be using. And I'm going to use human dummy because that means they're not going to do anything. Uh, and then you've got some option here for quest on kill. So if you kill the, the NPC, then obviously the quest is failed. You can disable that if you want to have the NPC be an enemy, for example. Uh, and then disable point of interest on kill. That is, again, if you have an enemy that you want to kill, you don't want him to respawn the next time uh, you load into the level. And you can keep that true. And then despawn on invalid is... Uh, tied to the condition. So if the condition is true, then it will spawn the point of interest in. And if it's false, depending on this setting here, it will immediately despawn or just stay like this. For example, if you want someone, uh, after you kill them, that they immediately despawn rather than their body lying there, you could set that to true, for example. Now next up, we've got sequences. So sequences are there for the really power users that want to make a really complex quest with maybe different uh, storylines and stuff like that but we're not going to worry about that we're just going to have one sequence and so you just type it in sequence again it will fill everything in for you again you can have a condition for this but we're not going to worry about that and again this is another nice feature of this 
uh, extension you will have some JSON validation happening so it will tell you that this one needs at least one interaction I mean technically it's possible to not do that but it should you should want to have one interaction at least otherwise there's no need for this sequence okay so what kind of interactions do we have again I recommend you look at the documentation that I linked um, but we're just gonna go with a simple dialogue so again type in dialogue and again you have some options here so finish action for the continue behavior means that the interaction has to finish completely let me close it down here as well has to finish completely before it goes to the next interaction because these interactions happen sequentially uh, continue immediately would like it says there just continue to the next interaction um, and then you we're going to leave that finish action for a dialogue that means skipping the dialogue and then checkpoint behavior uh, we're going to leave it none for now you can basically save where in the quest you are or in this line of uh, sequence so for example if I was to set this to current that means that if I exit the interaction zone or reload the level and then go back to this person then they would start at this interaction again and next obviously would be the next and none is just not saving anything uh, if you have a previously saved checkpoint it will use that instead then needs player in zone uh, is basically self-explanatory sometimes you might want an interaction that just happens whether the player is there or not but as we are doing a dialogue here it makes sense that we have actually the player in the zone and then here this is just the text so let's say hello can you help me okay and then after that once the player has skipped that dialogue uh, maybe let's say we want the NPC to shake the hand with us to basically accept the quest so you can type in handshake that's another snippet for you and again we want to wait for that action or interaction to finish and we don't need to have a checkpoint here again leave that so now that we've been asked if we can help and shook the hand let's say the NPC now wants to receive an apple so there's another interaction for that receive item again nice little snippet here paste everything for you um, so again we want to finish this action uh, but let's say we actually do want a checkpoint here so after we shook the hands of the NPC and we leave we come back he still should remember that we shook hands and he's now receiving the item so let's put that to current so this means that this is our, now going to be our checkpoint and if we leave the interaction zone and come back or reload the level this is where he remembers where we left off again we want to play in the zone and I've already pre-filled this here food apple is the ID for the apple then holder name would be where he would holster the item after he's received it but uh, you can just leave that empty and it will just despawn and then this you don't have to worry about this this is in case you want custom animations to play for receiving storing and finishing just leave that default and then now uh, he will only accept an apple so once we've given him the apple uh, let's say he thinks us. so another dialogue again we want that to finish again I would say we want current here we want to save this as our checkpoint uh, so that we don't have to give the apple again and this time we say thank you very much and now we want to finish the quest that's basically it uh, and there's another one interaction for that set quest state do that again this time it doesn't really matter because set quest state finishes immediately anyways um, we don't need a checkpoint maybe you want yeah. okay this is a good example um, you can set a checkpoint here that means that he won't thank you again once you come past him uh, but if you don't put a checkpoint here he will always come back to this one so that he will thank you every time you go past that's up to you if you like that and then set the state to complete it again I want to refer you to the 
documentation if you have any questions on what possible states there are and what other things are possible. Uh, I think many people when they look at the documentation get overwhelmed and they don't quite know what's happening but I hope that after you've seen how to go through this that you'll get a bit of an understanding what each of these blocks mean and you can literally just build them, put them together and if you do something wrong like put an interaction in a place where it should be a sequence it will let you know that with this extension so it says value must be quest sequence so this will let you know this is an interaction and it doesn't go there so let's put it back here okay so this means we've now got a quest uh, where an NPC spawns in market at this location that we set and when we get close um, he will talk to us hello can you help me then we shake the hands uh, he then asks for an apple and maybe we want to make that more clear can you help me can you hello can you bring me an apple so now the player actually knows what item he requests and yeah that's basically it let's save this don't need this anymore and let's go in the game and check this out. All right, and here we are in the game. And as you can see over there, we've got a nice NPC. And as we get close, he says, hello, can you bring me an apple? I believe there should be apples somewhere lying around. Otherwise, I will have to use my prized possession go so we continue and as you can see now he oh first we shake the hand that's right shake the hand and now he wants to to get the apple but even if we leave now he will want to get the apple and he doesn't take any item he just takes the apple thank you very much and if I continue now um, We've completed the quest. So if I was to reload the level now, he would disappear. Yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. And as always, it was a huge honor.